with us. Do you truly believe that God is with us at this time? Emmanuel. Working in your life. Yeah. Thank you, Grandpa Lip, for uh, reading the scripture this morning. The Exodus is sometimes hard for us to understand how people see the power of God and still not believe in the power of yeah. God. That's right, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, a lot of people um, read the history of the Exodus and wonder how these people could act the way they did. How could they not remember what they had just seen in Egypt and continue not to see God as a force in their life? Despite all the plagues they had witnessed and the pillar of fire by day and the, and the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud uh, by day, they still doubted the power of God. They, this shows that the display of miracles is not always the display, that these kind of displays of miracles are always not good enough to show there's a sign of faith, to give us faith. And that we should never ask for signs and miracles for us to believe that God exists. That's right. He gave up, they gave up themselves, they had given up themselves as lost. As if God's arm had been all of a sudden shortened and he was unable to work miracles today as he did yesterday. As the Egyptians, as the Egyptians were angry with themselves for the best deed they had ever done in their lives, so were the Israelites angry with God for the greatest kindness he'd ever shown them in his life, in their lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They expressed a sordid contempt of the liberty, preferring servitude over liberty when they came across difficult situations. Yeah, yeah. They had soon forgotten. Excuse me. They showed an ingratitude toward Moses. Who, had, who, who was a faithful instrument in getting them to their deliverance. They had soon forgotten the miracles of mercy as the Egyptians had forgotten the miracles of the wrath. And they as well as the Egyptians had hardened their hearts. We tend to look at the Exodus from our past and not their present. We see it from the outside and know how the story ends. They, while they were living in the midst of the events and wondering when will the story ever end. Yeah, 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 yeah. We see through history, mm. but this was their story. Yes, yes. The Israelites felt extreme distress and danger at the Red Sea. This was caused by Pharaoh's violent pursuit with his army. While the mountains was on his left, on their left side, and the mountains was on their right side, and the Red Sea stood before them, and they became anxious and panicky. These newly freed Hebrew people were on the trek through and to the unknown. They saw danger and fear everywhere. See, for you see, they were not hunters or soldiers. They did not know how to fend for themselves or to, protect, or to protect themselves. They were people who led a sheltered life. They lived a life with no hope all of their lives. They lived in a generational situation. The last Hebrew person they had heard of who was free was Joseph. And that was over 400 years ago. So when, difficult, when difficulties arrived, they did not know, know how to handle it and fear set in. They were a kept society and never had to solve their own problems. So when they were hit, so when they hit a wall, they did not know how to move forward yeah. and yearn 
for what they knew. They did not see that God, who, the, the God who had freed them, was the same God who would lead and direct them to their freedom. They did not see God working in their lives to lead them to where he wanted them to go and where they wanted to be. Yeah. Today, we run into similar situations. The same kind of obstacles. We can hear God's voice and go where he wants us to go. But when we get there, things are not as we thought they should be or would be. All of a sudden, a trap door opens up beneath us, and we feel that we're either falling or failing. A host of raw emotions collide with real questions for God. How could we have been so wrong? Did, you, did we not hear you correctly, God? We, fa we prayed, we fasted, we wanted nothing more than to do what you want us to do and to do what you want to do now. Now here we sit in a new city with debt, no job, and seemingly no future. What are we supposed to do? You, you do not like that story. You feel like God has left you high and dry. But he hasn't. He is simply moving the puzzle pieces around to move you to a place for his perfect plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I read of Joseph's life, when I see where he had to endure some tragic, tragic situations, I don't know what Joseph was thinking or feeling, but my reaction would have been, this is not how my life is supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not supposed to go this way, God. God, where are you? Get me out of here. Yes, Joseph had taken some, Joseph's life had seemed to take some wrong turns. But they actually were not really wrong turns. They were necessary turns to get him to the, just the right place yeah. at the right time. Yeah. Our limited vision does not allow us to see how God is working behind question, questionable scenes in our lives. But we, but we must trust that he is working in those scenes. In fact, it may be precisely at the moment that we understand him least that he is working the most. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus told his disciples, you, you do not understand now what I am doing, but someday you will, John 13 and 7. Sometimes it is only after the fact that what we thought were obstacles were really God's setups all along. So let me tell you, God is always working. God is always working. Though we see it or not, God is working. Is God working? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God is always working. No matter what I'm seeing or not seeing, and no matter how I'm feeling, God is working. God does not change with the circumstances. Just because things around me are changing or seem uncertain, God is working. I need to remember that God is faithful and true to his promises. He is always working. How do I know God is working in my life? Oftentimes, we don't see it. But, but God does indeed work through, through troubles and hardships. Sometimes he uses these times to help us grow or to, bend up, or to benefit others around us. He might use these times to, keep, to stop us from doing something harmful or to motivate us to do something that's right. He's always at work around you. So Jesus said in John 15 and 7, Jesus said to them, my father, he's talking about his, to his disciples, my father is always working to this very day. And I too am working. We believe that God is at work in every detail in our life. What is spiritual work? Spiritual work is about finding meaning and purpose beyond ourselves. 
through work. It involves profound feelings of well-being. A belief that one's work makes a contribution, a sense of connection to others and common purpose, and an awareness of a connection to something larger than ourselves. As Christians, we are called, God has called us to view work with dignity. Because God himself worked, and he created us to work. We have to view work as service. And anywhere we can co-create co with God and to serve others in the world. Yeah. Yeah. You work as a place where discipleship happens. People are looking at you through your work. Yeah. They're learning through your work. Yeah. If we say that we call ourselves Christians, someone else should be able to see Christ in our work. Yeah. God uses work to form our hearts. What does God's work mean? Work accomplishes good. Work is a very important and necessary, especially when it we see with little or no recognition or pay. What does it mean when God is working through you? God has a plan in everything he does through and in us. He has purposes that and they are good. Everything we go through in this life as we follow Christ, sometimes they seem painful, <laughs> should be considered good because it happens according to his purpose uh -huh. and all of his purposes are good. That's right. That's right. God has different kinds of work. Mm -hmm. He has redemptive work. Mm -hmm. That's God's saving grace and conciliatory actions. God has created work. God fashioned the physical and human world. Yeah. God has provincial work. Yeah. God provisions for and sustaining humans and the creation. God has justice work. God has a maintenance of justice. God has compassionate work. Yeah. Work involving comforting, healing, guiding, and shepherding. Yeah. And God has revelatory work. Work to enlighten us to the truth. All right, all right. The ways and means of God's work. How does God carry out his work today? Sometimes he works supernaturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, he does redemptive and relative work through his Holy Spirit in, re in revealing our sins and leading us to Christ. However, it is also that God has chosen to use human beings, both believers and unbelievers, to do this work. The Hebrew children were free to do God's work through an unbeliever. Pharaoh was an unbeliever. God used Pharaoh to do his purpose. Yeah, 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 yeah. God can use anyone, believing or non-believing, black, white, Hispanic, whatever. God can use whatever he chooses to get his work done. God is always working. With respect to God's redemptive work, people identify this as different kinds of work. His redemptive work through evangelists, pastors counselors, peacemakers, writers, authors, producers, songwriters, poets, actors who um, incorporate redemptive elements into their story, novels, songs, films, performances, and other works. Yeah, yeah. God can use anything yeah. and anybody to get his message across. Yeah. God is always doing 10,000 things. God is at work when evil seems to be winning. Yeah. God is at work when our plans are frustrated. God is at work all the time. Come on. I can say with confidence that God is always working. I can say with confidence that this is a good news for those in Christ. Yeah. For Romans 8 and 26, but we know that for those who love God, 
all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. For those of you in Christ, you can trust that all things are going to work out for your good. Yeah. They, have been brought, they have been bought by the blood of Christ. You can breathe a sigh of relief. Even if you make a mistake or you misunderstand God's will, you are not done for. Yeah. God has not abandoned you. Yeah. You can look at the promises secured by you by the blood of Christ and know that in the middle of God orchestrating a plan, that it is for God's glory and your good. Amen. Just let me say, if, it had, if, if you are not in Christ, then this is not true for you. That's right. Instead, instead of coming to find out at the end of this age that, you have, that all things have worked out for your good, you have found out that he has built up a reason, after, that, you have, that you have built up reason after reason to be separated from God. Please don't wait to turn your life to Christ and receive the promise of eternal life. Yes, sir. You're going to change your life. Change it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know that God is real. Now, I don't care what you did five minutes ago, yeah. how you lived five minutes ago, what you said five minutes ago, come to Christ right now. And all of that yeah. is forgiven. Yeah. Be you 15 or 50, yeah. or 120, 150. God erases all of that. That's part of his redemptive work. And how does God fulfill his promises? He fulfilled his promises through his timing. What we always say, you know, God is always on time. Always. We may not see it, but he's on time. He may not come we want him, but he's on time. We may be anxious. We may be worried. But don't worry about it because God is going to take care of you on time. Many of us have a difficulty understanding God's timing. See, God lives outside of time. He has no yesterday and today and tomorrow. It's all fall on one plane. It's called eternity. God lives out. God created time for us not to mark him. <laughs> so like I said again, many of us don't understand God's timing and how he fulfills his promises. We can't wait. We can't wait. But those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. We expect results today or tomorrow not years from now. A time bound, we are time bound human beings and we cannot grasp God's eternal eternity or his eternal purposes. Ecclesiastes 3, 11. More than not, we fail to see God working on our behalf. Yeah. Yeah. I really wonder if we really fully understand that God is concerned about our every move thought, word, or deed. I wonder if we know that he is working behind the scenes to see us through our day-to-day -day journey of this thing we call life. As we aimlessly go through our day-to-day -day functions, I fully believe that God is working in every area of our lives before we even get there. That's the expression that God, tomorrow for God is for tomorrow for us is God's yesterday. Again, he steps out. He's outside of our timeline. I fully understand and know that what we are doing or not doing, what we will encounter, and all the strength that we need to go through it, he fully understands. He will not put on us more, no, more than we can bear because he already knows what tomorrow is going to bring. I don't know what you're going through right now, but rest assured, God is working for your greater good. When we give up, I would need to know all the details. They go back. When we give up the need to know all the details, rest assured, 
God is working for your greater good. We can have a holy confidence of independence of all situations. What's going on does not concern us. It concerns God. How God uses us is how God uses us. It's not about us. It never has been about us. It's about us glorifying God. Yeah. When he calls upon us to do a work, and we go about doing the work, he is glor we are glorifying God. You see, if we, if, we, if we need all the accolades, you know, our accolades and stuff, but what we're doing, we're not glorifying God. We want, we want the reward. We want the award. We want the acknowledgement. What we want, what we want, we want. But God said, but what about me? What about what I want? I want you to glorify me. There's a world out there that needs to know that God is, work, is real and God is working on their behalf. We all have been slaves or captive to sin out of our lives. Some in a state of gener generational lostness. There are some people who have never known God generationally. Their parents didn't know him. Their grandparents didn't know him. Their great grandparents. Didn't know him. So they're in a lostness of not knowing who God is, and they ne they have never seen the love of Christ. But see, but also some are walking in a newness to their free life. But they run into an obstacle and are scared and don't know what to do. As we saw Pharaoh before he let the people go, his repentance was not true repentance. And he did not change his ways. Israel is, not doing, is now doing the same thing. They are great for now, but they soon forget because of out of, because of, out of themselves and out of fear of the Lord they did not, that they did not follow him. They are still thinking in worldly terms and still are rejecting God and is going to keep their, keep their generation from finding the promised land. Yes, sir. That's what we're after. The promised land. As the Hebrew children were after the promised land, we too today as believers in Christ are seeking the promised land. God said he would never leave us or forsake us on our journey. Because God is always working in our lives to push us in that right direction. Yes, we may hit a, hit, a, hit a wall. We may see the enemy behind us. We may not see a way out. We may be between a rock and a hard place. But I, I'm behind the rock of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm, I'm there because I know what God has done. Now, as I've already seen what he's able to do, and I continue to believe that he can even do even more. Yeah, yeah, if he can yeah. change somebody like me, yeah, yeah. he can change anybody. He can change anybody because God is always working for our good. The lost need our witness to see that God is real and that there is hope. That God is working on their behalf and for their good. They didn't, they didn't know that he is working behind the scenes to see them through their day-to-day -day journey of this thing we call life. God is always, always working. I've heard somebody say, well, on the, on the seventh day he rested. Yes, he rested. He rested from creation. But he, not, he didn't give up his control. He still kept the planets in their orbit. Yeah. He, 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 he still kept the waters in their banks. Yeah. He kept the stars from, from falling and the moon from shooting out his way. God, even on his rest day, was doing something. Yeah. Rest. Rest does not mean completely do nothing or get idle. Rest means to just calm yourself down. Yeah. Right. Focus on God. Yeah, 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 yeah. See him in your life. Meditate on what he has done and what he can do. Rest in the Lord. But God is always working. God is always working. He never sits down on the job. God is always working for you and for me. The 
doors of the church are now open. Amen. 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 If, you've, if you've known God,